This is Celtic Connections with Cathy Sinnott. Hello and welcome to Celtic Connections. I'm Cathy Sinnott and I'm coming to you from Cork in Ireland. Patrick McChrystal is well known in Ireland and around the world as one of Human Life International's veteran pro-life, pro-family warriors. Here's Patrick talking to Paul Macquarie about a new HLI Ireland initiative named Catholic Action Life League, or CALL for short. Patrick McChrystal, welcome to Celtic Connections. I'm delighted to be here, Paul. Patrick, you and I go back a long way. My old friend Patrick McChrystal. Yes. Uh, 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 We're both from Northern Ireland. It was infamous days on the Armo Road. And we both live to tell the tale. Although I'm a city boy and you're what we call a culture, is yeah, that right? Well, we brought a wee bit of culture <laughs> to the city, to the city slicker. <laughs> Good response. Patrick, you're the executive director of Human Life International in, in Ireland. Ireland. That's right. And you have an initiative coming up, a very important initiative, The Call, and it's Catholic Action Life League. And we're going to talk about that in a few moments. Sure. And it's something in response to our situation here in Ireland. That's right. Could you briefly give us an overview from your perspective, HLI, on what the important issues that we need to be looking at in Ireland? Yes, Paul. Well, it it really goes back for about 30 years to the late 1970s when the Irish government legislated for contraception. And contraception opened the doors in an unprecedented way to introducing the culture of death into Ireland. That that was laying the groundwork for uh, abortion, in vitro fertilisation, pornography, uh, secular sex education, the morning after pill, abortifacients, and the tearing asunder of the beautiful marital act between husband and wife, where it, from its God ordained place, right out into the marketplace, where anybody could defame or devalue de, uh, that, that act, whether married, unmarried, or whatever uh, background they're they're coming from. Um, so we have had a, a steady, ongoing building of the culture of death in Ireland, exactly the same in as in America. And when I was an EWTN at the March for Life two years ago, I said that the problems in Ireland are exactly the same in America and that we need to go back, I believe, as a nation and as a Catholic church and make reparation to God. Maybe not even an an all-Ireland reparation, but perhaps on part of the universal church, a reparation for how we have embraced the culture of death and, and the need to repent of our embracing the culture of death and even the Catholic community in Ireland and beyond in embracing the culture of death through contraception and what it has done in breaking down the family. So, Patrick, the beginning with this move towards contraception in Ireland. Yes. And the fruit of that being some of these things you're talking about. That's right. And you have a response to that which involves reparation and repentance. That's right. So, what are the current fruits or issues that are coming up in Ireland that are part of that bad fruit that we need to address? Well, the most recent one about to come up is the proposed so-called marriage, gay marriage uh, referendum in May, which uh, we are told will give equality to uh, homosexual couples. That's only the latest fruit. We're also, Ireland right now is convulsing with the whole surrogacy issue and in vitro fertilisation. And there's currently a children's and family relationships bill going through our government here in Ireland that will de- deprive children of the right to a mother and father and it means that any person married or unmarried married or of whatever orientation can order a child, pay for it, have a, sur- a surrogate mother uh, bring it to full term and take the child off and the child is never any way of tracing who its biological mother or father ever was and then last year the government legislated for abortion and all these things are just manifestations of that separation of the unitive and the procreative that Paul VI talked about in Humani Vitae. So we are seeing in Ireland really uh, what I believe is facing a national apostasy a national turning away from God that has been very much systematically programmed by forces that we don't 
easily see, but it's very clear to see that this is a deliberate, uh, scheduled uh, approach, a policy that's been played out in every country of the world. It's no coincidence that the same issues are erupting in America and all the different countries of the world at the same time, especially around this so-called uh, gay marriage thing. So in the midst of this, we're seeing a breakdown in family and a woeful lack of catechesis. Patrick, people listening to this would have thought of Ireland, Catholic Ireland, as still a nation that apparently is almost 90% Catholic and still a very high percent, quite a high percentage of people, you know, attending Sunday Mass at least. What's happened in Ireland? You talked about contraception. What's happened that's caused this seemingly shift and the tsunami of secularism in Ireland? Well, I think it's certainly partly related to the so-called sex abuse scandals with the church and the small percentage of priests over the last 20 years in Ireland that the media milked for all it was worth to give the church a bad name and has not relented on that and is, has, it seems determined to not to let the church forget. Even though Benedict XVI apologised for all of this, the church, the media seems determined to keep rubbing the church's noses in this. And the, the, the practical consequence of this, which I think has been part of the media strategy, is to silence the bishops and the church on any matters in any way related to sexuality, because it's very quickly put into a, a, a church spokesman's face, what about the sex abuse scandals with the priests? Also, we have a nation of Irish people, very well-meaning, um, very w- won't do anybody any harm, but don't have the, the formation to critically and assess a moral issue or a moral dilemma and come out on the side of the church's teaching. They're driven by how they feel and are told to follow their feelings and what they think is the right uh, um, answer, rather than referring to the principles that the Catholic Church lays down for us, which are the, the is, is the way to happiness in this world and eternal salvation in the next. And as well as that, the pillaring of the family and the deliberate uh, goading of our teenagers and young people into premarital sexual activity is an, a serious attack on marriage because those who are goading the, our young people into premature or premarital sexual activity know full well that those teenagers and young people, that statistically their chances of getting married and then staying married drastically falls. And therefore that is an attack on the family even at a, at a, at a teenager stage or a young person stage in their 20s. Patrick, I listened to a talk that you gave recently. You were giving us some stats that have come out with regard to families. The best place to bring up children, the best place to make relationships work is in a marriage, sacramental marriage. That's right. Uh, Tell us about the fireman you spoke to in Ireland and his story. Yes, I have a friend called Jer who was a fireman in Dublin City for 40 years. And he told me recently that he many times he was called to house fires in Dublin. And he noticed over the years a recurrent pattern where he went to where there was a house on fire where a cohabiting couple uh, was living that he noticed time and time again that the man jumped out the window and saved himself, leaving the woman and the children behind. But when he went on scene to um, what turned out to be married households, that the husband stayed behind, got the wives and children out before he got himself out. And Jer noticed this. And I was raising the question, I was debating in UCD recently, University College in Dublin, about two weeks ago to the students. And I said, did the man in the cohabiting household, did he act nobly when he exercised his freedom of choice at that moment? And what household would you prefer to live in, the cohabiting situation or the married situation? They weren't, nobody said anything, but I just left it to them to make up their own mind. It's a, it's a powerful demonstration of the difference, isn't it, when a situation like that in life and death? Well, what it really talks about is uh, the man, the husband, is willing to lay down his life for his spouse, which is what all husbands and all men, indeed, are called to. But when a man makes a commitment to that and sticks to it and the children that come forth, it almost goes into his soul, it rooted in his soul, 
to actually demonstrate in a real way putting himself in danger to save everyone, whereas the cohabiting man is really in it just for the moment, keeping his options open uh, for the future. And from an anecdotal story like this, just isn't there. I'm talking to Patrick McChrystal, who's Executive Director for Human Life International Ireland, and we're talking about, we're going to about to talk about an initiative that Patrick has called CALL, Catholic Action Life League. Patrick, we know that the bishops brought out a statement recently, Why Marriage Matters. You know, a very good statement, pointing out the Catholic Church's position on marriage and the problems with this same-sex marriage referendum, so-called same-sex marriage. And you're talking about the laity and what we should be doing. Could you tell us about this particular initiative that you have coming up called Catholic Action Life League? Yes, uh, Paul. Um, Things have got so bad in Ireland that it almost is like we have to go right back to the beginning and start all over again. And Ireland, we are woefully uh, short in articulate, confident, knowledgeable Catholics who know their faith and love their faith and are willing to articulate those truths in a secular arena. And we decided that it's time to go back uh, and start that process right from the beginning again. And this initiative, we've invited a gentleman from America called Tim Staples. Which many people will know. That's right. He's the daily talk show host with Catholic Answers and a former Assemblies of God minister who thought himself and prayed himself into the Catholic Church. And he's one of the world leaders in a Catholic apologetics alive today. And it's our honour to that uh, Tim agreed to come and give us four and a half days of intensive training uh, on this, from the 6th to the 10th of April. And what Tim is going to do is bring us through uh, training, uh, teaching in media skills, apologetics. Uh, we're going to have some fellowship uh, for, and formation in catechetical matters, uh, equipping the participants for the spiritual battle, Uh, prayer, as well as outdoor pursuits and activities, because in the midst of all this mental um, input that we're going to give folks for this intense, if you like, Catholic boot camp, we're going to have some outdoor activities like uh, archery, uh, canoeing, um, mountain wall climbing, to balance the physical, the mental with the physical. And what we want to do is prepare our participants for real Catholic activism. And we're going to look at the lives of the saints, exemplary lives of the saints, like uh, Maria Goretti and St. Charles Luanga and a multitude of others uh, whose lives illustrate um, truths, like also like people like Thomas Moore. Um, and, and many of the great saints of the church give up their lives defending marriage, which is very interesting. And we believe that being Catholic is not a spectator sport that people have to step forward and say, the book stops with me. Um, As the scripture says, today is the day of salvation. There's no point in waiting till till tomorrow anymore. And we, the Catholic lady, the Catholic baptized, will be accountable someday to how we use the gifts and graces that Jesus poured out upon of us since our baptisms and our confirmations. Now, I know that if we have 25 or 30 people away in the countryside for a week's Catholic activist training that, you know, in some sense, that's a woefully small uh, contribution in the face of five million people who are being seriously brainwashed right now by the media in Ireland, the secular media in North and South. However, I take great heart that a, 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 a candle lit in the darkness transforms a darkened room and that Jesus was delighted with the offering of the little boy with his loaves and fish, uh, his five so loaves and fish. Um, were woefully inadequate in the face of 5,000 men, not to, f- to mention the women or children that needed fed. But when the master waved his hand over the breads and fish, everything changed and suddenly there was enough. And if we look at church history and Bible history, it only takes a very small number of people to effect a big change in a nation. And indeed, Second Maccabees 3.17 uh, says that it's not in the size of the army that victory in battle depends, but strength comes from heaven. And I know that if we have even one or two or three 
uh, confident people stepping forward from this week, even one, and God may give us more than that, that it's a great step forward and we can build on that. And we're planning that this is only the beginning, that we would like to do one in six months' time again as a follow-up. And what we're planning to do is, whilst we're going to take through the participants' um, uh, daily exercises, for example, uh, how to present the kerygma of the gospel in three minutes, or how to present their personal testimony in three minutes, or how to p- produce a press release uh, and a whole number of practical um, uh, little ex- exercises, and then we're going to give them uh, each a task to do once every six, once every month for the next six months, and come back together in six months and see how they got on. And we're starting the process of starting from the very beginning, uh, with our hearts filled with hope in the knowledge that Jesus has, has told us that I will never leave you to the end of time, and we we know that he hasn't given up in the church and who are we then to think that we should give up in the church because the church is the bride of Christ and he's never going to give up on his bride. Patrick you have a great story about Pope Pius X and his advice in his day for the situation in his day. Could you tell us that story? Yes Paul. Um, Pope Pius X was conversing with a group of his cardinals one day and he asked them what do we most need today uh, to save society? Build Catholic schools, said one. No. More churches, said another. Still no, he said. Speed up the recruiting of priests, said a third. No, no, said the Pope. The most necessary thing at this time is for every parish to possess a group of laymen who will be at the same time virtuous, enlightened, resolute and truly apostolic. And those four uh, uh, phrases, virtuous, enlightened, resolute and apostolic, are the inspiration for our call Catholic Activists Week. And we're aiming to concentrate in starting the process of producing virtuous, enlightened, resolute, apostolically minded individuals from this week onwards. Fantastic, Patrick. So when is this training school and how can people sign up for it? Well, we um, have on our website, the www.humanlife.ie, the information on what we're doing that week. And also there's an application form uh, which people need to uh, fill out and send in to us before the 25th of March which is the closing date for applications. The Catholic Boot Camp is going to be in a venue called Cora Lee Outdoor Education Centre in Bell Coo, County Fermanagh. And we are heavily subsidising the week so because we don't want money to put people off. We're aiming primarily for an age group of 20 to 40 years of age, but not exclusively so. Uh, and we, don't, we want everybody who God would want to send us to be trained to, to come to us and that money wouldn't be putting them off. Patrick, fantastic. And I hope people listening to this, like maybe they're abroad, maybe they're not in Ireland, but they can pray for this weekend as well, especially if there's some connection to Ireland. That's right. And the website, humanlife.ie, and we'd be delighted for your listeners' prayers and support. Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome.